Hello everybody and welcome to my second SFML tutorial. In this tutorial I will be showing you how to create a player class and how to move that player. So what I've done here is I've just created a basic window. So if I run this right now all it, all it is going to do is create a window. This right here just centers it. I got this off the internet. I'll uh, leave a link to this template I guess in the description so if you want to pause the video and copy down this template it's just everything I went over in the last video how to create just a basic window. But anyways, today we're going to be getting into textures, sprites, and how to move those images across the screen. But we're also going to be using a class and object-oriented programming to do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, we're going to go to our header file, add a new item, and make sure it's under header file, and then we'll call this player, and I don't think we have that .h, it does that automatically. First thing they want to do when you declare a class, you want to say pound pragma once, and then this will just let uh, C++, C++ know that you want to create a class, and then we just want to create our class player, don't forget to end that in a semicolon, and then we'll create our public modifiers here, our private modifiers here, and under private modifiers, actually the first thing I do is I want to pound include IOS stream, just because I might be using that, and we also want to pound include SFM L slash graphics.hpp just like that and then under private modifiers we're going to be creating an SF texture and we'll call this P texture and then we'll also create an SF sprite and we'll call this P sprite so these are going to be two of our private variables and then the first thing that we want to do is we want our default constructor obviously so I'll just put a comment default. I, I don't know if you actually need that, but I know I've run into problems in the past with not having that, so it's good just to have it. And then we want to go ahead and put in our overloaded constructor. And our overloaded constructor is going to take in a uh, standard string, and we'll call this uh, image directory. And if you want to add an image, actually, you have to put it in your uh, project directory. Let me find where mine is. So if you open up your project directory like this, and then you go into your main project folder, that is the name of your project, then you want to make sure that you have all these files for SFML here, and then you want to also add your uh, picture, which mine is player.png. So I have that in there, so I can reference it once I get into my main class. And then I just want to say, if not, uh, what do I want to say, p texture, why did I always add two t's, dot load from file, img directory, so if it cannot load the file from the directory, then we just want to see error, an error. And then this will also, this will load it from the directory and it just, so you don't have to put an else statement here and saying else load it from the directory. This statement right here automatically does it and it also troubleshoots it. So that's why it's good just to do that all in one big chunk instead of breaking it up. It saves time and space. Anyways, um, then we just want to set p sprite dot set texture to p texture, just like that. And then that will set the texture. And then the next thing that we want to create is let's create a void called draw player. And then under draw player, we also want to create an SF render, not texture, window. And this one has to be a reference to a window, so you have the ampersand there. And then we'll just say window dot draw p sprite. So this will draw our sprite to whatever window we want to reference. Or render window. Render window. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to be able to move our player. So we'll call void move player, just like this. And then here we're going to take in a character called direction. So they want to specify their direction. And then we also want to take in a float called move speed just like that and then we'll say if direction is equal to actually we'll put that in here is equal to up so if they want to go up then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and say um, p sprite dot move 
and then to go up the x has to be zero and then we want to set negative whatever they put in for move speed just like that and then we can copy all this here put an else save in here and then if they type in the letter D then they want to move down they just have to take away this negative sign here and then that'll move their player down and then we want to go left and then th we want to set the Y to zero and then move speed to go left has to be negative and then finally to go right move speed has to be positive under X and zero under Y just like that and I think that's all we really need for our player class at the moment and let's go ahead here let's uh, include our player class right there and then Notice I have also win window dot uh, set key repeat enabled so that way they can hold down the key and then continuously move the object. That's uh, a good thing to have. And um, we just want to go ahead and we want to create a player my player and then I want to reference player dot png which remember I think I showed you guys was here player dot png so that will create the instance of that player and then we want to go ahead down here and we want to draw our player so we'll say my player dot draw player to the window make sure that that's after you clear your window and then we want to go down here and then I'm actually going to show you a different way of how you can get key input this is a more efficient way that I found how to do it so then you say if sf keyboard is key pressed then two parentheses then sf keyboard and then let's use wasd so we'll start with w they press w then we want to say my player dot move and we want to move up and then we want to set our move speed how about to around 6.0 let's just make add the point out there so we know that we're using a float and then we can copy this, put an else statement here, add the if, and then if they hit S, that means that they want to go D down. And then let's copy this again. <laughs> Excuse me. Again, if they hit A, that means that they want to go left. So then we'll put an L there. And then if they hit D, we want to put R for right. They want to go right. And then this should work. If we go ahead and run this, you can see our player appeared in the corner there. And so if I hit the D, it'll go right. If I hit S, it'll go down. W, it'll go up. And A, it'll go to the left. So yeah, there we go. We have our player class fully instantiated, and he can move across the screen. It's not the most smooth movement. There are obviously a lot better ways to move around your player, and um, I don't really know them, so uh, that's why I didn't do them. If I figure out a better way I'll definitely show you guys but uh, yeah that's pretty much it for this video I'll leave all the source code down in the description if you like it please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you next time see ya